So if you want to come with me... And here we are, <laughs> Mr. Deebridge, the legend of the Bad Company crew. Come through, come in. So Deebridge, here we are in the studio. Pretty basic setup over the years. I've kind of refined it down to two basic bits of equipment. My laptop and my baby is my Mackie speakers. Right. You think you can tell the difference between stuff that's been done all in digital? Obviously you're bouncing yeah. this internally. Yeah. Or stuff that's running through an emu in a desk. If you've got the ear for it, you can hear a difference, but mm -hmm. it's almost like... Can the average raver notice or the record difference? Buyer, or right. record buyer. There is an argument that the sound has degraded a bit since, you know, talking to um, engineers, you know, the mastering engineers at uh, uh, yeah. and Exchange, mm -hmm. Exchange Simon, and they're like, yeah, they've noticed there's been a difference in sound quality. But I think that was more to do with people making a transition to software and getting used to it. Not getting it right. Yeah, and weren't getting it right the first time around. But now it's kind of like, People are really getting, you know, getting, you know, getting their heads around it and getting good sounds out of it. Mm -hmm. So, what about um, an average Debridge tune? Like, how how would you normally start your tune? I'd have like two, three weeks of collecting samples. Living around here, I've got yeah, a lot yeah. of cool little record shops. Mm -hmm. so I'd you know, go and find old things, Definitely, get yeah. collect them all, sample them, cut them up, and then then I've got like that back, that month's batch of samples. Like the way my sample like sample is set up, I've got it broken down into each month it's with much samples, do you know what Right, I mean? okay. So what's the first thing you get up though? It's always the beats, man. Always the beats. That's the beats. So you get your groove going, you yeah. get your beats and then, yeah, then what's the... next? Laying sounds or you go straight for bass? Generally it's the sounds next. Something that's gonna give me the direction in which, do you know what I mean, the, the say the bass line's gonna go. Do you wanna show us something you you'd be doing on, you know? Yeah, yeah, why not? Alright. Alright, All right, for me. We're running logic now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll get a, you know, get a break up. Yeah. Get that running. I'm, and I'm kind of like, the way I work is like, I like layering things. I prefer, yeah. to, I prefer to create or make a break. Because I use recycle to cut things up. Yeah. And then, to, you know, to get the MIDI file as well. So, within my sampler, so this is here. Yeah. I've got all these, you know what I mean, all these breaks. So using a cook congo, so within, on my hard drive, I've got the MIDI file for that for that break as well. Right. So yeah, cook combos. So now I can just drag that MIDI file into the arrangement. Yeah. And usually it'd probably be because it's usually be a little bit. It seems like a little bit out of time. So you've taken a, well, say a one bar loop in recycle. Yeah. Chopped it all the, the accent points, and then you you're, you're bringing it in, and that's so it's playing it, its original groove right now. Yeah. And then you're gonna what you're gonna quantize? Yeah, now I'm gonna quantize it. Uh -huh. Just to time it up a little bit. Right. The main break is just one break now. You're yeah. saying when we hear that finished deep bridge or bad company product, yeah. the break that we hear is normally a combination of what three or four breaks. Or? Yeah, kind of like well, I'll listen to it, and if it sounds for me, if it sounds heavy enough, then. It's cool, but more often than not, I may layer the bass and the snare with another foot drum or snare. Yeah. So I know we'll add weight. For that kind of thing, I tend to use hip hop drums. Right. Because their kits are just a lot. I don't know. It's just cleaner just and snap and, and. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm obviously just going to follow the foot to the original brakes. Follow the rhythm. And then you carry on to do that what with snare and beat. Yeah, I'll have to maybe find a snare or I'll, yeah. you know, listen to it. I might want to put some kind of jiggy in there, like a little, you know, little flutter of a roll. I'm basically put it through this bad boy here. A PSP vintage warmer. Yeah. This just like is also it's like automatic fatness. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Your D bridge, your bad yeah. company. I know you're doing a lot of DJing and producing on your own rather yeah. than just with a crew. Like, What's really going on with you now? Because I was in that kind of um, unit, you know, it was hard for people to really hear what I was about. Right. Do you know what I mean? So in a way, it's almost like you can get lost within the group. Fresh was the first to kind of step away from BC. He's gone, gone out there and he's made, you know I mean, made a name for himself as an individual. Yeah. So it's like, well, I can do that as well. And I've, I've, you know, I was ready for that as well. Back on the earth, this um, knack of producing anthems in a way, do you know what I mean? Right, right. So, like the tunes that I make on my own aren't really that way inclined, they're not designed to smash up a dance floor. Yeah. Whereas BC tunes really work. 
the way your studio is designed makes a difference, do you know what I mean? And it was very one player, our studio. There's always like one person in control and then you've got the seats around the outside. I know, that, do you know, know that what I mean? vibe, yeah. Shot down on Safari, I don't know, really have nothing to do with that album. I was, going, I was going through, I think a lot of producers go through that in the stage, they're kind of like, I'm sure of whether they really want what they're, what they're doing and what they're involved in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, I, I, wasn't in a, I wasn't in a happy place personally myself. I wasn't really feeling what was going on. I stepped away from drum and bass and I moved. You know, I went in and I started working with my brother SpaceX and helped him on his album. Mm -hmm. whilst, Which is what? That's a hip hop project, right? Yeah, it's hip hop. Okay. He was signed to K7 and, yeah. you know, I did, I did did some tracks on that and it was, it was cool because I was like, because I've been so caught up in drum and bass for so many years, mm -hmm. you lose sight of a lot of things. I had a year, or like a year, year and a half where I really wasn't wasn't happy and wasn't in it. And now it's kind of like I've come back and the dynamics of DC has changed. You know what I mean, Fresh is doing his thing now and now I'm kind of like, yeah, I feel like I need to do my solo project. So it's mm -hmm. like, I'm in a, I feel a lot, you know I mean, a lot stronger and a lot better because um, whereas before, like I said, because you're in that group, you're only part of your voice will ever be heard. Mm -hmm. you know, now I can get, now people can just hear me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's time, and in a way, it's like, I know, it's like, a, it's like a selfish attitude, but you, sometimes as a musician, you need to be, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, your stuff's always been musical. You can hear there's a lot of musical talent in Bad Company, but rather than the music being played with kind of noisy, angry sounds or keys, I'm noticing your solo works a lot lighter. Yeah, in my head, it got aggressively beautiful. That's, that's the term I've, I've kind right. of coined for myself. It's got the weight, but it's still got the melody. It's got melodies and it's got right. soul. And it's so you're keeping rhythm. the beats hard and the bass yeah. hard, but the flavours on top yeah. is what's making it a bit different. What tips would you give to aspiring up and coming drum and bass producers out there? People get too caught up in tunes. Kind of like, I've got tens of thousands of loops on there. Do you know what I mean? And I'll almost like, you know, I'll almost, almost find that there may be one in every twenty that will get finished, right. or is any good. So it's like, don't, don't get, like, don't over listen to things. Get some good speakers. These are my weapons of choice: the HRA 24s, Mackies. Choose your sequence up. Do you know what I mean? And just really get to know it. Really, really, you know, and just fill around and just. Have a look around at things and look at what things do. Don't be afraid to just try things out. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to blow up in your face. So it's like, give everything a go, man. Just try it all. Well, that's wicked, man. Cool, man. Nice one. Thanks for coming around.